Next work session is finance update. Mr. Durkin. Mr. Chair, members of the board, Dr. Casey, um, you have a plethora, to put it mildly, of finance items on your agenda this evening. Some of them are public hearing, some of them are on consent. I'm going to walk through these before I turn it over to Mr. Harris for the rest of the finance update. Um, the first one you see here is a public hearing that will be held tonight on the county year-end amendments. Um, as we typically have every year, we do our anticipate a surplus um, on the revenue side. We are seeing some increased pressures on the expense side in terms of overtime and utilities, but we brought that message to you before and it's something we're diligently monitoring as we move through 24. Um, what is atypical in this process this year is that we are recommending to appropriate some of that projected surplus. Um, typically we have waited until the audit comes out in November, but we do have a high degree of comfort in the numbers that the budget staff downstairs have projected. And rather than wait um, six months almost to jumpstart on some much needed projects, we are recommending to appropriate some of those funds right now so that they can get a head start. Um, some of them are on the slide before you, um, our unassigned fund balance to remain in compliance with our 8% policy. Um, stormwater real estate credit, that's more of a kind of accounting manoeuvre to make sure that, that fund is shored up as part of the 5% rebate. Um, on the CIP, that's where most of the action will happen. Um, we are proposing to add funds for a third access to Cosby High School, um, some land acquisition for any economic development opportunities that arise. Um, and inflation contingency and also um, as you know that we reserve our BPO revenue surplus typically every year that is one of the items that will be recommended to appropriate 10 million dollars and that will be to have a down payment on the north south connector at upper mag um, and then there are some other items on your uh, year-end amendments. You heard Mr. Bowles talk about the VATI grant and that will be on there to appropriate both the local and state components of that. Um, and then there are some bond proceeds that we had from our recent sale that we are proposing to uh, put towards River City, the Western Area Middle School and Bensley Elementary School. And if there are surplus allocations after that, then that will be where we do come back in November um, with some final recommendations for the board to approve. For the school's end, um, they are recommending to um, have some year-end adjustments in reserves. I'll talk about the reserve component in a couple of minutes. They are projecting right now an estimated surplus, surplus of about $11.9 million. They, um, opposite to us, are seeing that typically more on the expense side. There's a slight um, revenue shortfall due to the state's skinny budget that Ms. Walker referenced earlier. Um, they do have some uh, rollover of funds for things that have started in 23 that will roll over into 24. That is a typical thing that they have every year. We are recommending that that be approved. They do um, have a proposed reserve allocation of surplus dollars. Given where we are with the state um, budget process right now, we are recommending not to approve that but postpone that until we have the final results of the audit um, later this year in October and November. Yeah, and I think the important point there, because this, this can be a, a sensitive item, this is not advocating to take or divert any of the school surplus to any other you know, use. But until we get all that, Ms. Walker, that God Gerard said, you know, sort of painting that very uncertain picture, we just want to sort of hold back on the decision for how to further invest those dollars. The difference on our side, we're doing a little bit of that, but we've also got some of the timeliness issues that, uh, that Gerard talked about that we really can't wait around on. So it's a, ours is a little bit more of a hybrid. Uh, they've got more uncertainty, so we're just going to postpone that until the fall, come back, and have a fresh conversation about how to invest those same dollars. And then finally, they have a request to reallocate some CI project savings that they would like to move to the Western Area Middle School project. It's kind of process that we typically have on our side as well. As I say, uh, we do recommend the approval of the rollover and the CIP allocations, but do postpone the reserve um, component, as Matt just pointed out, um, until the audit in October and November. Moving on to fiscal year 24, we do have some slight amendments. Um, the budget that was adopted on April 5th was about $955.2 um, million. There is one major reduction in the general fund. That is the $3.5 million reduction you see there in use of reserves. That was um, 
to be put towards River City projects, but as I mentioned earlier, we did have some bond proceeds with the recent sale. They will then move that $3.5 million towards that project instead so that we're not using reserves. Those monies will stay in the bank. Um, there are some additional positions being added that will be a net neutral adjustment to the budget. I won't walk through them all but there is the police department reorganization. The sheriff is asking for a part-time to full-time uh, reaccreditation position. And then there are some um, recreation activity specialists for parks and rec as well. Overall, as an addition of eight FTEs. And then for the other funds, um, you just heard from Mr. Poma. Um, we were kind of, when we adopted this budget on April 5th, still working out the mechanics of how this would work. So the funds now um, do include some startup funds so that he can get out there and bring the sports tourism to the region. Yeah, and it just just to point that out for everyone, it's the first time through this, the 485 that's appropriated there in the tourism fund are legally restricted dollars that can only be used for these purposes. So again, you know, a lot of competing needs, but that 485 is not drawing off of anybody else's column. Those are dollars that we get back. Uh, the, the TOT tax has gone up. We get larger and larger reimbursements at the end of the year, and so now we are employing some of those dollars locally as opposed to just relying on, on other sort of third-party groups to help us with these items. And uh, so that's, that's the source there. I just think that's really important to, to note for folks that are watching at home. Um, and the CIP, there are two changes. The first is that $3.5 million that I referenced. The second one is the reduction in the state portion of the revenue sharing. Um, when Mr. Harris and I presented the proposed budget on March 8th, we said that we would come back and amend the budget with this. The state has paused this till at least FY25. The local funds in there um, for $5 million do remain. They will be part of an overall transportation contingency. Um, especially with the inflationary environment that we're facing right now. And then finally, there are some small tweaks to some other funds that are a direct correlation as a result of phase two of the pay study that you see there before you. Um, before I turn it over to Mr. Harris, does anyone have any questions? Right. So this June is probably our second busiest month, so we're just going to run through a bunch of quick hitters here for the rest of the presentation. Uh, first, Foremost, uh, circling back last month, you all gave final approvals for the bond sale. Well, we had a group that uh, uh, went to New York and made the uh, made the pitch for the county. And I have to thank uh, Mr. Smith, who you wouldn't typically, you know, think he was part of that group. And I think it really speaks to the the holistic view that the agencies take, you know, of locality. It's not just sort of what's in your financial reports. It really is your entire spectrum quality of life and, uh, and, and as Mr. Carroll's point out here already, your transportation and uh, sort of that development part of it's a big, big component of what they evaluate. So he did a nice job and helped us to get reaffirmed from all three agencies. Uh, so that's that's the best news on here. Uh, we did complete the sale with those ratings in place. Uh, we priced out $116 million of bonds at 3.3%. Uh, so that's, you know, much lower than what we had been sort of modeling this transaction. So that's debt service savings. That's everything we talked about. We were out selling the uh, the referendum. You know, that th this is really the key piece of this. So you, um, you know, you see that kind of come to light here. So that's fantastic. And then I think at the bottom line for the citizen, this means that that referendum that they approved just this November is already uh, moving along here with this first sale. And you will see a pattern from us over the course of the next you know, five to seven years, depending on how the economic backdrop is, uh, to have these sort of spring sales so we can get these projects underway. Uh, we've touched on, you know, the long list is up there for the county, River City, Horner, Chester Fire Station, Stonebridge Police Station, Enon Library, and some of the conservation areas just on our side with this sale. Uh, so we, you know, we are entrusted uh, with the citizens to execute a referendum it's really important that we get out there quickly and, and get those uh, projects moving along the the sort of odd looking graphic up in the top corner uh, that's a a nerdy industry paper that comes out every week uh, but it did highlight and then said there at the beginning of the week that we sold that Chesterfield was considered the most influential deal in the country uh, that particular week so our FA passed that along to us but I think it just it speaks to you know we talk about that less than 50 localities that are triple triple a but the folks in the markets the the folks that live this every single day do really watch what chesterfield county does and uh, so again third party sort of validation of all the things that uh, we talk about on a regular basis so uh, nothing but good news from from our recent sale um switching gears a little bit uh the chippenham place cda we put that in 
in place back in 2008. It was really a uh, an insurance policy, if you want to just sort of boil it down, for the redevelopment of Cloverleaf Mall. Uh, that project has been a runaway success from a financial perspective, and so it happy and proud to say having worked on that project that we no longer need this insurance policy it comes with a lot of administrative overhead and it's effort from staff and audits and tracking and accounting and all of those things uh, so for something that we really have outgrown from a financial perspective also frees up some money uh, that can be used for other redevelopment efforts hope Springline being uh, sort of the top of that list since we last met, the EDA and the CDA board have voted to dissolve the entity, and you are the third part of that sequence. So this is on your consent tonight, board vote. Uh, then we will file paper with the State Corporation Commission tomorrow to eliminate this, and then we'll be down just to one CDA, which is a non-traditional one out of Mag Green. So we've uh, you know, had great success at w w Watkins Center and also here at, uh, at the former Cloverleaf Mall site. For your uh, eye chart test of the day, uh, we've been talking about this feels like for several months in a, in a row, but no changes from what we talked about last month. This is your ARPA uh, recovery plan public hearing tonight. We advertised last month. The items in blue are the ones that are changing. Most of this is just sort of some cleanup items. We are lowering the contingency down to basically nothing to move these out into projects to get these dollars moving along. Um, but, you know, one of the biggest changes would be see school construction switching from Fallen Creek to AM Davis to, to help uh, assist with that project. So uh, we've had this information out, pushed it out, uh, you know, pretty continuously over the last 30 days. And so this will hopefully be the final tweaks to the plan. Again, that's a public hearing at the tail end of your meeting tonight. Uh, just a, a couple of other items on your consent you see the item numbers listed there the first one as we've done over the last several years your diff funds these are your operational funds not your DCIF, which already automatically roll over given that they are life to date appropriations uh, we are asking the board to remove that rollover cap for another year there's can still continue to be some supply chain constraints and uh, it's it's been a little difficult to spend some of these money so it's not adding money to any of these accounts it's just to the extent that they um, have dollars and they're in excess of the cap uh, we roll over the full amount just to make sure that we can get all of that work completed and that resource remains uh, at the board's disposal so that that's been a standard practice the last couple of years and just asking for another year to do that you got a couple of accept and appropriate grants. The first one, uh, DCJS, in the amount of $324,000 to continue to support all the great things that the sheriff's doing from a mental health perspective in the jail. And then unrelated to your overall ARPA plan, there were some state ARPA dollars that they are uh, doling out through, again, DCJS in the amount of over just over half a million dollars for police equipment. Uh, that's on your consent agenda. Uh, you see the items up there. And then lastly, uh, you know, a lot of uh, hard work by Ms. Brown and her team trying to broaden our uh, roster of purchasing tools. So this is a sort of what they call job order contracting. Uh, worked closely with Clay Bowles and his team. Uh, a lot of help from them. But basically what this does, it gives us a streamlined process for smaller projects under $500,000. We're able to eliminate a lot of design costs that come with that, speed up the process. Uh, this is a state program that they have piloted. And so we are, you know, basically with board approval, becoming part of that overall state pilot to see if it works, to see if it truly does speed up and make these small projects uh, more cost effective if so we would like to you know in the future add a similar program locally but again it, it's just an effort to make sure that these CIP dollars we talk about on a continuous basis you know Gerard and I's part of it ends at a certain point and then it's up to folks to actually execute those dollars so this is just a tool in their toolkit to try to help them to do that in a more efficient manner and with that we're happy to uh, take any questions you might have Board well, members, any questions or comments? A comment, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. First of all, thank you all for making the amendments uh, prior to the conclusion of the audits uh, springing forth in that regard. Also, very complimentary of the renewed AAA for Chesterfield County. I think that's very, very important. I always take that very seriously. Is there anything, here's a question for you, however, in regards to that. 
is there anything you think we can do better in terms of our fund balance, in terms of anything we do operationally that can make us even more attractive? Um, stepping up, always looking at what can we do better in the area of uh, financial stewardship and being the very best that we can be. I often say to people, we're one of the best managed counties in the nation. And to be so, you have to always continue to improve from where you are to where you hope to be the very best. And so I'm just asking if anything y'all heard in terms of what we can do as a board, what we can do as a county relative to uh, improving in any area we can improve or get better or work toward getting better. You know, to you and Dr. Case is certainly weighing on that, and Jared as well. But again, I, I'm applauding you on the uh, if, if what we've done thus far. No, I think it's a, it's a great question, and I think um, it, it's it's a careful balance. I mean, certainly, I think from a reserve policy position, we could look at taking that eight percent a little bit higher. The, the the offset to that is it's less dollars to sort of deal with some of the infrastructure needs in particular we have on the ground. So we're trying to, you know, find that careful balance. I think we're in a point in our history where we probably lean a little bit towards the infrastructure piece, but we got to keep an eye to make sure that we're in line with our peers from uh, a reserve position. And then I think, as I touched on earlier, it's, it's that comprehensive view uh, of the county that you know, we had, we met with three different review teams and two of them had traveled to Chesterfield for sports tourism. Um, and so, you know, I mean, I think that lines up perfectly with, with Mr. Poma's presentation. And, and so it really, you know, was enlightening to see that that's, that, again, that's the front door. Their view of the county not only was what we were saying that day, but what they had come down and seen. And so I think it's really important that we continue to, again, invest all the way across the spectrum and not just be policy wonks. And we have to maintain this certain reserve position, you know, Gerard will lay down in front of that, uh, you know, train any day of the week, but we, we got to make sure that we're, we're balanced in our approach. Okay, thank you. Dr. Mill. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I was curious to know when you were meeting with the folks up in New York, um, did they express any kind of concern on the limited um, financial streams that we were working with, primarily, primarily real estate and property taxes? Did they express any concern about that? I mean, I think it's it, that's a, a statewide limitation by and large. So, you know, we don't pick up a whole lot of that. I think the fact that we, we have limited federal exposure here is, is better from a revenue perspective. But they can certainly see that we are trying to diversify as much as we can. And then certainly, you know, the course of the last four or five years, we have a very strong story to diverse, diversify even within those streams so that our real estate taxes are not just, you know, a, predominantly residential and I think that that goes a long way so they understand the constraints that we're in but I think they recognize we're maximizing to the greatest extent possible and if I could just depend to that you know the, these rating agencies have been familiar with us for a generation plus so they heard the 2007 stories when the county was was dealing with them and the rating agencies were calling around to every local government at that time across the country reassessing uh, who they were and were they still of the same rating magnitude uh, Chesterfield County back then held on to its triple triple A. In fact, that at a point in time was actually rated higher than the United States government that prints money. So, uh, you know, it just shows you it took efforts on the county's part to, to come across and do all of that. Part of it is these reserve funds and rainy day funds. Uh, you all were tested as, as when we had new board members in 2020 uh, in March uh, 11th to March 25th that we had to amend and change an entire proposed budget in a matter of two weeks. While that wasn't quote unquote a, a recession necessarily, we were preparing as if there was one coming and, and things of that nature, the speed in which within two weeks, if you will, uh, a $2 billion budget was, was cut by 10, 15, 20 percent in some cases just to see where we could land because we were not sure what the month of April would even bring us. So those, those reactions and speed, not just as a county staff, but quite frankly, you as a board of supervisors, if you remember March 25th, and then two weeks later, you're in a public hearing and adopting a revised budget that was significantly uh, different. I, I would say the one question the three rating agencies did have in common for transparency purposes, it's not just Chesterfield, but their biggest concern nationwide right now is cybersecurity uh, and the threats and the hacking that is going on. 
And uh, you as a board of supervisors about a year or so ago uh, met actually with your school counterparts in, in a closed session. We invited two school board members, that is, with the entire board here, to IST departments, our police department, and the resources that you've deployed, you know, in just the recent years and will continue to deploy uh, on cybersecurity were answers to the questions that they had gave, that they have given us and, and much to their satisfaction. Not that we're done with that topic, uh, but again, it's another worthy topic that we'll probably have to bring you into closed session and show you how, what our defenses are like here. Dr. Miller. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I mean, one of the things I've been hearing, especially over the last week, and I don't think that it's an exposure for Chesterfield County specifically, um, but is empty office space. And when those leases start to run out in 27, 28, these major cities like Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., New York, uh, are, go are like deeply um, exposed and worried. I mean, I don't think Chesterfield County has that concern. But, oh my gosh, people are like, what happens when those leases start running out and the office space is still empty? Still got big gaps on those buildings. <coughs> and, and, and that is why we're fortunate. I know uh, Mr. Hart's sitting right behind me and he would say the same thing. The diversity of our economy, uh, making goods and products in Chesterfield is not an office space environment. And it's a, a warehouse distribution manufacturing environment for which those supplies are being consumed and, and onshored and supply chains are being, you know, reduced with, with what's in Chesterfield. But the, there are office parks in Chesterfield, and I know Mr. Hart is working as hard as he can to listen in here to see what other new businesses can arise that have an office element to fulfill what may be vacated space. Matt, we have a quick, one quick question. I think um, we haven't touched base on this, but, you know, you add in the fact that the CBTA has been created and now that the county gets additional funds coming in, uh, uh, as an additional revenue stream for transportation uh, and then also regional funds that are available for transportation. I mean, that probably had to help our bottom line as well with the rating agencies. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. I mean, the transportation is, is high on their list. So when you have, you know, to, to Dr. Miller's point, when you have a dedicated source that can aid with that, that, that certainly is a plus. Yes, sir. Thank you. Board members, anything else? All right. Thank you all for a great presentation.